Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a few actions that's going to make it easier for us to interact with Subversion on our computer. Now, first of all, we can get started by taking these three files and just removing them because we no longer need them. All of the software we need from them is already installed on the computer. But one thing we do need to do is we need to create a shortcut for our CMD executable so we can get to the command line easily. So we're going to go into the C drive, or, wherever you, or which, whichever drive you installed Windows to, and then we're going to go into the Windows folder, and then we're going to go into the System32 folder. And here I'm just going to do a quick search for cmd.exe. It should bring me my results. There it is. I'm just going to right click on this cmd.exe, I'm going to do send to, and I'm going to send it to the desktop. And that's going to create a shortcut, so anytime I need to get to the command line, I can just double click on this and it's going to open up right for me very easily. Now the first thing we're going to do in order to make our interaction with Subversion easier is we're going, to cr we're going to let Windows know where all the command line utilities for Subversion or SVN is stored. Because right now if I were to do SVN it's just going to tell me SVN is not a recognized it's not recognized as an internal or external command because it doesn't know that SVN EXE exists on our computer. If I were to navigate to the folder where the svn.exe is located, so if we just go ahead and we see the back two directories to get to the C drive, we would go into svn and then bin. If I do svn again, it's going to say type svn help for usage. So now it sees the command and it's displaying whatever the command is telling it to display. But again, if I go back to directories, now I'm in my C drive and I type SVN, it's no longer recognizable. So what we need to do is we need to set up the environment variable path and give it the path to the SVN bin folder. In order to do that, we need to open up our control panel. We're going to go to System. And then we're going to go to Advanced Settings, bring this up, and we're going to go to Environment Variables. Now if you take a look at system variables and you scroll down a little bit, let's go ahead, you're going to notice a variable called path. This is the one we want to edit. And at the very end of it, you just add a semicolon, we're going to pass it the C drive SVN slash bin. And we can click OK, click OK, and click OK. So now we have told Windows where the SVN command line utilities are stored. So let's go ahead, close this out, and we're going to need to restart a command line in order for that new path to be present in the environment variables. So we're going to close a command line, open up a new window, and now if I type SVN, you notice how it says SVN help, type SVN help for usage. Now it knows exactly where the SVN executable is stored because we gave it that path, so when I type SVN, it searches through all those folders and that last folder we gave it actually has the SVN executable. Now the, the next thing we're going to do, or the last thing we're going to do in this video to make working with Subversion or SVN easier is we're going to create a SVN Windows service that is going to start our server automatically for us when Windows starts. Now the way we create a service in through the command line in Windows is with the SC create command. However, we're going to first have to close the command line and in order to create a service on Windows, you're going to have to be running the command line as an administrator because it's going to need to change some registry files. So we're going to have to right click on the command line shortcut, and click on run as administrator, click OK. Okay, and now we're going to create our service. And, we're, and the service is SC create that's going to create a Windows service. Now the first thing we need to pass it is the name of the service, and we're just going to pass it SVN server. Now the first parameter we need to pass is the bin path, and this is going to be the location of, or the, the full path to the executable we want to run, and any parameter, parameters or arguments we need to run with that executable. Now for bin path, we're going to be running the SVN serve executable, which is stored in the SVN bin folder, so it's equal. And for any parameters when creating a service, you need to leave a space after the equals. And we're going to do C SVN 
bin and then svn serve dot exe now it's important to note that if the location where you installed svn has any spaces you will need to wrap this block in quotes so you have to escape the quotes with the with the escape key and you have to do something like that but since our our path does not include any spaces we can just leave it as is now the the arguments or parameters we need to pass for this command the first one is going to be service and this is just a argument you need to pass to let svn know that you're running this as a service and then the next one is going to be the root and this is going to be the root of your svn server so we're just going to space and we're going to create a folder called repositories and this is where all of our repositories for our SVN server are going to be stored. We can go ahead, close that quote. The next parameter we need to pass is called display name. And this is going to be the name in which when you take a look at the list of services through the, the, the GUI, through the administrative tools that Windows provides, this is what the service name is going to display as. And again, you need to have that space after the equals and we're just going to call this SVN server. The next is going to be depend and this depends on TCP IP and then the last argument we're going to pass is the start and that's going to equal auto and this is going to allow the SVN server to start automatically when Windows starts. So if I go ahead press enter oh, well looks like the service already exists so if I just go ahead, remove this, I'm just going to go ahead and SC delete, delete that service. Oh, going to give it the name SVN server. Okay. And if we run our command again, you're going to see service created success. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, open up our control panel, and go into administrative tools, and go to services. When we open up this, if we scroll down to the to our S's, you're going to notice our SVN server. And you notice the startup type is automatic. But the server isn't running yet. When you create the service through the command line, it's not going to automatically start it for you. You still need to do that initial start. However, if we start it right now, if I bring this into focus, if we start it right now, it's going to it's not going to run, it's going to fail. And the reason it's going to fail is if we bring up our command line again, we gave it that directory of C repositories. However, that doesn't exist. So it's going to fail when trying to start the server because the root doesn't exist. So if we go back into my computer, go into the C drive, we just right click and we create that folder, repositories. And if we go back to our services, whichever tab that is, Let's close a few of these out. There we go. And we hit start again. The server is going to now start. So now we have our SVN server running on our computer. Now these two things that we just did is going to make our life a lot easier when dealing with working, especially in the command line, with these with subversion. Thanks.